Good morning, everyone. Time for our live art lesson for Friday. And I will do a better job of saving this so it can go up on Google Classroom later. Sorry for all the moving around. I'm just trying to get my um, camera adjusted. So I'm going to show you this really cool process today, which is actually kind of a sneaky way to maybe do something that looks like watercolors, even if you don't have watercolors at home. What you need are Crayola type markers. For sure, it's just kidding. I don't care. Um, oh, hold on. We won't play our call. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, the podcast I was listening to just randomly started replaying again. Um, and I mean, y'all might be big fans of Brene Brown, but who knows? Anyway, so here's what you need. Foil from the kitchen. Yay, foil. You're probably going to want some paper towels as well. Um, because I can, I've can. i been reusing this one piece of foil for a few different things. Um, you need Crayola markers. They can be these Wash washable ones, but even normal Crayola markers are um, going to work for this. So alternately, if you have some more intense art supplies, like a Tombow type brush pen or something that looks like this would also work. Just a water-based marker. Sharpies are not going to work here for what we're doing. Um, some optional supplies. A Sharpie. Uh, crayons. And if you have it, so these are like water brushes, but if you just have like a paintbrush and, ooh, that one's gross. Um, a paintbrush and some water, you can use that. Um, I also like to have a little spray bottle. This is not actually this, it's just water and a spray bottle that I use. Um, you know, maybe this is something you have under your sink or something. And you know what, if you don't have this, you could get a little glass of water and when we put the water down, you could just like dip your fingers in it and flick the water around. So I'm going to show you a few different things to do with this fake watercolor process. Um, so very quickly, the, the basics of it are I, I take my foil, I take my markers, and I'm going to color on the foil with my markers. And I can draw a picture of something, or I can do something totally abstract. I'm just going to do some abstract colors, and you can actually get some really cool blending because the marker doesn't dry very quickly on the uh, foil. So, it, which is, I mean, just kind of an effect that you really can't get most of the time with markers. So, I do stuff like that, and then I'm going to take my spray of water, or this is when I would flick water down on it. I'm going to spray it to make sure it's really wet, and I have a piece of just white paper. You could use notebook paper, it doesn't matter. Plop it down on there, and you can kind of see immediately that water... Um, kind of absorbing and the marker coming through. I pull it off and it's like a little print. So you can see, depending on how much water I add, it blends together more or less. This is really my, where my spray was concentrated. So now what we're gonna do is take this and apply it to a few different art processes. So I've got this. Um, I'm just in the interest of not wasting paper towels, I have this like gross art towel I use that I'm gonna use to wipe off my foil. Okay, so here we go. The first thing that you can do is draw a picture in Sharpie. These are just some abstract flowers that I drew a little bit ago. And I'll kind of show you very quickly how I did some of these shapes. So some of these little guys are just like little, almost like little groups of circles. I've got daffodils. I was feeling very springy this morning. And the daffodils you start out with two lines that get a little bit further away from each other, and then you're going to connect them at the top. It's like a, a wavy, messy oval. And then I kind of draw some petals that come out from those, maybe a couple lines like that, and you have a daffodil. You could also do a rose. Oop, there's my rose over there. It goes like... So what I'm doing is I'm kind of drawing, again, messy petals. I think the thing with flowers is the ones that look best and are easiest to draw are the ones that can be a little weird and messy. So that's what I, how I draw a rose. And then sort of I draw kind of like poppies. And those I start in the middle and I come out. And so it's like a messy teardrop. And you can see I let them be weird. I don't want them to be perfect. Uh, rarely in nature are the flowers totally perfect, even the ones that seem really structured. So here's this. Oh, hi, lots of people. Um, I'm just showing you some drawing real quick, and then I'm going to switch over. Last one is sort of a Black-Eyed Susan or a small sunflower. 
so I just drew a second. And again, I think they look better if they're a little more abstract. Okay, so I've got my, my bouquet drawn. And now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna add some color to it with this really cool watercolor process. So I'm just gonna think, you know, I'm, I'm not really gonna be able to color it in specifically like in certain areas because of the how the printing is. So what I'm doing right now is just picking some colors that I like and putting down some different sections of color. I'm leaving them a little more patchy because I'm actually make them a little more circly too. Because I'm thinking about the, you know, sort of the shapes of the flowers and that probably I'm gonna wanna put some green in the middle. Let's see. Uh, maybe one more. Do I have just normal red? I should. I guess we're using more of this. Okay, so I've got that. Now I'm gonna come back in and I'm just adding in some green in the middle, thinking about those stems, the that there's some leafy shapes maybe. And then I had that ribbon at the bottom and I think I'm gonna make that. I'm gonna use my fancy brush pen and just sort of draw that down. Okay. So I drew this, I think it's all out of scale to my other thing, but that's fine. Take my bottle of water, spray, 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 spray. I'm kind of excited to see how this turns out. I'm gonna take my paper, plop it down on there. And sort of smooth over the back with my hand. Oh, I like that. So I did kind of hit some of my flower areas printing the uh, thing. So this one, it's really important that you do have to use Sharpie because if I just used my washable Crayola marker, when I flipped it over and printed, it would just completely run and disappear. So there's an option with this. I'm gonna use my gross art washcloth again. Might be time for a new, less gross art washcloth in my home studio. All right, so the second one is the one I actually showed this morning on my uh, stories video, or I guess Instagram TV video and all the other places. And that is using a crayon resist. So you might've done this before with actual watercolors, but we can also do this with our marker watercolors. So here's a tree I drew. I actually took some inspiration from this from one of the how to draw videos that I posted for y'all. Um, and so again, I really like keeping my nature drawings abstract. Um, so kind of weird tree. If you look at my leaves there, I didn't draw any single leaves. They're just scribbles of different colors that are clumped up. Um, so when I started this, I kind of drew some sort of lines to be like my tree trunk, fun stuff like that. And then the way I did the texture and made it look 3d is this is the part that was from that video that I thought was so cool. So I'm holding the, my, uh, in this case, my crayon, and I'm drawing curved lines that go back and forth between the two lines. If y'all are, if y'all did that op art project earlier this quarter with the, um, the one that was made of the lines, this is like a less structured version of that. And I can make them go this way and so that's how I got that texture. And then the leaves, seriously, I did this. And then I would take another one. Oh, I already broke that crayon. And layer another color on top. Maybe another color over here. And there you go. So I think, so here's my finished one. I feel like I'm on a cooking show right now. And... I'm going to go ahead and do my watercolor printing in the background. And I was thinking about, again, that sunrise this morning that was so beautiful. It was like red and orange and pink. And I think those are gonna be my colors in the background. Cause this could be like one of my backyard trees in a few weeks when there's actually leaves on them right now. Right now there's still just little buds happening. Okay, here we go. 
So I think I want orangey red colors. I'm gonna have some of that dark purple up at the top. Um, we'll do this. So I'm gonna start building because I don't wanna smear my hand through it. I'm going to um, start at the top and work my way down. So up here, still nighttime, really dark. It was, I mean, it was, it was still fairly dark when I woke up this morning. So I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna think about what color I can blend into it next. Maybe I'm gonna start that really, what is this? Mm, primrose apparently. I'm gonna blend some of that, the primrose in. And now I'm thinking about those reds. Like I love those, the sunrise when you see those bright red colors. Um, they're just, it seems like the sky should not be able to be that color, but it is and it's amazing. So reds, hopefully this turns out as bold as what I saw this morning. And then pull in some more, ooh, look at that. What is this? Oh, just orange, okay. That makes sense, orange is my favorite color. I'm gonna bring some of these colors up a little bit because I'm thinking about, you know, kind of the clouds and how that looks. And let's see bit of yellow down at the bottom and then I'm actually going to pull in some green to kind of represent the grass because I didn't put any down oh I just want that um okay so spray bottle of water spray 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 if you decide you want to do this I think that there's and you're leaving your house for any reason they have so little spray bottle, like plastic spray bottles at like the Dollar Tree, probably two for a dollar. And they're really fun and handy to do art stuff with. Plop my paper down, face down. Smooth, smooth, smooth. If you've done printmaking, you might be familiar with this move. I guess supposedly, if you think about it, this is actually kind of like mono printing anyway. Mono meaning one, print meaning we're printing. Lift it up and ooh, oh wow. That's super bright. Um. So if I was to do this again, maybe I would actually color in the tree more so it shows up, but I'm actually still pretty happy with the results. Okay, one last thing for today. I feel like I'm talking a million miles an hour. Um, and that is how to, if you have a paintbrush handy, go ahead and use your foil to actually you make watercolor paint. So I've got my paper and I've, I just folded my foil so you can see things that more than one thing at once. And here's what I'm gonna do. Start out with my marker and I'm just coloring on my foil and I'm trying to get a good amount of ink on there cause that is going to turn into paint. Let's see, I feel like this is another one that's gonna be inspired by that sunrise because I'm still stuck on the sunrise. Okay. So I'm, I'm excited to see it. So I experimented with all the other ones last night, but this one I did not. So it's gonna be a bit of a surprise, hopefully a happy accident of how it turns out. So like I said, this is a uh, water brush um, made by Pentel. I really like these for traveling and doing watercoloring, but you can just use a normal plain old paintbrush dipped in water doesn't need to be anything fancy like this. Um, so I've got this and I'm, you know, this brush is wet. Remember watercolors, it's water. Oh yeah, and I can start to blend it there and then paint on my paper. Oh wow, this is totally working. Ah, I'm so excited. Um, so I can take this and treat it almost like I would normal watercolor paint and if I run out of a color, I just color on the paper again. I'm so excited right now. <laughs> so yeah, so I can go ahead and paint and this would let me do something that's less abstract. I mean, the, the thing with the sort of monoprint style over top of a drawing is it's always going to be sort of abstract because it's hard to get the precision when you're printing like that and trying to line stuff up. But with this, I could do an actual watercolor painting and I could blend these colors together if I want. You know, there's no reason that I can't create custom colors. Oh, that's fun. Okay, 
Um, and then when this dries, if I wanted to, I could come back and draw over top of it with Sharpie then. I mean, so that's an idea. So three different things that you can do with just marker, foil, a little bit of water. I can make my own watercolor paint. I can do a drawing in Sharpie and print on it um, with the um, after coloring on the foil. Or I can do kind of a crayon resist by drawing on my paper with crayon and then doing that same coloring on the paper, spraying it and printing process. Um, I will be back around two o'clock on the Atkinson Drawing Channel. So if you want to pop by and see what I'm making for my own artwork today, you can do that. Uh, miss everyone, bye. <laughs>